Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at some of the top of the line dash cams on the market. Now the dash cams that we're gonna be taking a look at, we've got the Blackview DR750S two channel, the Thinkware F800 Pro, and the DoD RC500S. These are the ones that I'm personally interested in myself and in running full time in my car. And I'm really curious to see which one is the best, uh, especially for me, because, well, they all kind of have their own strengths and weaknesses, and they're going to appeal to different people. And so in this video, I want to kind of go over the differences between the dash cams and uh, give you guys my thought process behind how they compare and which one I like best. These dash cams are all very similar. Uh, they're all 1080p full HD dash cams for both the front as well as for the rear. You can see I've got the three rear dash cams hooked up right there as well. So they're two channel dash cams to record both in the front as well as back behind. They also have the ability to record both when you're driving as well as when you're parked. Uh, that way you get complete protection, you know, if you're driving or parked, front and rear, to give you guys the additional protection. And that's actually what I'm looking for too out of a dash cam. None of them have an LCD on the back, which makes a dash cam a little bit more compact. And instead they have Wi-Fi to connect to your phone. And you can use your phone to do things like aim the dash cam, uh, change settings in your dash cam, or even view footage that you captured right from your car, which is very convenient. The Thinkware and the Blackview dash cams also add some additional cloud functionality, meaning they can use the Wi-Fi to connect out to a hotspot and uh, you know actually go out to the internet and add some additional cool functionality. The DoD does not have that option. Uh, they actually kind of, instead of focusing on the cloud stuff, they've put more of their uh, engineering and resources into optimizing the video quality. So that's where their focus is. Uh, I had a cool conversation with uh, the VP of DoD uh, at SEMA last year, and we were talking about kind of the different focuses of the dash cams, and it was interesting. He was saying one of the things is a lot of dash cam manufacturers don't actually know what customers necessarily would want. So they're trying lots of different things and seeing what sells the best, what winds up being the most popular, etc. And so I'm kind of curious to see that too. You know, they all have their different focuses and strengths and weaknesses. Now, I'm personally most familiar with the Blackview series of dash cams. I've run several generations over the years uh, and I like them as a good all around package. Nevertheless, it does have some weaknesses and I'm curious to see if the other ones are going to be better fits. They're all good quality dash cams and they do a great job of recording what's going on around you. Now that said, there are some differences in terms of uh, detail and just the overall look of the image. If a car is directly ahead of you and it's pretty close up, they're all going to be able to capture the license plate pretty easily, which is really nice. What about when we start getting to kind of some of the limits of the dash cam's resolving capabilities? So if the car starts getting a little bit farther away or maybe it's off to either side, how does it look then? Now, what I've noticed looking over some sample footage is that sometimes the Thinkware will actually capture detail better than the black view, like in the uh, white SUV you'll see here on the right. However, sometimes the black view has a slight edge, like on the uh, silver truck that you'll see. But in general with DoD, uh, the picture quality is gonna look good almost all the time. You can take a look here uh, at the Toyota's plate on the left-hand side. So kind of the black view and the Thinkware, I've noticed they kind of go back and forth as far as which one has better video quality, um, but the DoD seems to be kind of consistently doing a really good job. And that's kind of the trend that I've noticed. So if I were to rank the video quality between the three, I would say DoD comes in first. Uh, the black view, I'm gonna give it a second place finish, and the Thinkware, I'm gonna say is third. Now this is especially interesting because Blackview had a firmware update recently to bump their uh, maximum bit rate from 12 megabit to 25 megabit. The DoD's bitrate is 15 megabit, and the Thinkware's bitrate is only 10 megabit. And so Blackview actually has the highest bitrate with the dash cam, but I've actually noticed that uh, the DoD surprisingly does a little bit better job of resolving details more consistently across the board. So that was actually pretty interesting. Bitrate is the whole thing. There's still, you know, sensor quality and the lens choice and how the image processing is done and sharpening and all this stuff too. But uh, yeah, that's kind of what I've noticed. Now, I've also got my eye on the Blackview DR900S. It's the 4K version of the DR750S. I actually have one of those incoming, uh, and I plan on doing some comparison testing with that one. I think that one is probably going to wind up having the ultimate edge, uh, just based on some preliminary sample footage that I've looked at, and I plan on doing some comparison testing with that, of course, too, but kind of sticking to apples to apples and sticking with the 1080p dash cams, that's kind of what I'm noticing so far. Now, if we look at some nighttime footage, uh, I've noticed these dash cams, they're all designed for good nighttime video as well. And when it's dark, they're all doing a surprisingly good job of being able to see in the dark. Now, in general, I'm noticing the black view actually gives me the, uh, the best ability of just seeing details when it's dark out. It seems like the black view kind of gives me the slight edge as far as just making out details in the shadows. 
That said, it also seems to be kind of the hardest to make out license plates too. Um, so that was actually kind of interesting. Now, if you're driving through a parking lot at night, for example, I've noticed none of them are gonna be able to actually make out a license plate. Just with the longer shutter speeds and whatnot you need at night, and with the motion from your car, it's just really difficult for any of these dash cams to make out a plate. But when you're stationary, I've noticed uh, the Thinkware and the Black, and the DOD rather, uh, do a little bit better job of making out license plates. If we flip to the uh, rear camera, I kind of noticed the same trend with the, uh, the black view having a little bit more detail in the shadows and just easier to see what's going on at night. Now here's a quick sample clip with the rear cameras in the daytime, uh, and you can see how all they look. Uh, I've noticed in this example with the black view, again, it's a little bit harder to make out license plates, but uh, something I'm kind of concerned about is I've done a lot of testing with different dash cams in the rear, and I've got tint on my rear window. I used to actually stick the dash cams directly on the tint, and when I go to pull off the dash cam after testing, or when I'm just upgrading, it actually kind of ripped off my tint. So it doesn't actually stick well to the window anymore, and you can actually see places where the tint is ripped. You can even see that in the dash cam footage. And so with that kind of in the way, um, it's directly in front of the black view one, since that was my main one, and it's going to be kind of messing up the overall level of detail. And so I'm not really confident in my results with the uh, the rear image quality testing. I think I'd have to take them all off and just completely reapply my tint. I can't fix it. So I'm not too too confident in my rear like image quality stuff. Um, but I just kind of wanted to share that either way with you guys. Next, let's go ahead and talk about uh, parked recording. Uh, all the dash cams do a good job of recording both when you're driving as well as when you're parked, and they have the capability of automatically switching between driving mode and parking mode. They go about it a little bit differently, and that's one of the differences I've noticed. Uh, typically, you'll need an accessory if you want to plug it into your car's battery to ensure that uh, the dash cam doesn't drain your car battery too much and you can't start up your car next time. Uh, with the Blackview, you need to buy another accessory called the Power Magic Pro, basically a voltage monitor. With the DoD, uh, you buy an accessory called the DP4. It's the same idea as the uh, the Power Magic Pro, but you have kind of less uh, control and configuration capabilities. You only have a cutoff at uh, 11.5 volts. The Power Magic Pro, you have uh, a little bit more control and options. Now, Thinkware actually does this the best. They have the ability to do all of your voltage management stuff in the dash cam itself. You don't have to buy another accessory, which is really nice. And so you can set voltage cutoff levels for when the dash cam turns itself off, has uh, battery protection stuff in the wintertime when it's colder out. Uh, so it's really nice. I like their approach best. Now, that said, once you get everything wired up, you're not really going to notice that much of a difference. But nevertheless, I really like the fact that they uh, actually built it directly into the dash cam. Now, as far as the way the parking mode functionality is implemented, they all have things like uh, event detection in case of an impact, uh, motion detection, things like that. Uh, my favorite one is not necessarily maybe time-lapse recording. What I'm most interested in is uh, impact detection. Uh, and it's particularly for when I go to downtown Seattle and I'm parallel parked on the side of the street for a couple hours. Um, I've had situations where people have bumped into my car. I've had minor situations. I've also had pretty major ones where a guy whacked the side of my car. And so what I'm looking for is impact detection and the ability to record for maybe a couple hours when I'm there. Um, now, the Blackview actually does this the best. And the reason I say that is they're the only one that has a pre-buffered parked recording, meaning the dash cam is actually continuously recording. And when it senses an impact, it'll save about six seconds before the impact, then the impact and the time period afterwards. So you get to see not only the car driving away from you, but also the event with the car coming in and hitting your car. Uh, with the other dash cams, they don't have pre-buffered parking, meaning in case your car gets hit, that's the sensor that will trigger the dash cam, it'll then start recording, you'll see a car in front of you or something, and then you'll just see it driving away. And so I really like the fact that the Blackview actually captures, you know, the event itself and leading up to it. It's the only one that does that. So that's kind of the main reason why I like Blackview's parked recording. That said, Thinkware has a cool option with extended parked recording options. So for those of you guys who want to be able to record for several days at a time, they have uh, kind of a really low power option where it's basically event detection and uh, it wakes up in case of an impact but the camera basically is asleep in a very low power option so you get much longer recording time so for those of you guys who want to record for several days the Thinkware is going to be giving you the best option of doing that. You may also want to look into some uh, external battery packs or things like that. I've done a video on that too. But that's kind of some of the differences I've noticed with the parked recording. Uh, moving on to the Wi-Fi. Uh, they all have the ability to pair to your cell phone for Wi-Fi. Uh, and then they all have an app that you can use to change settings and, you know, see what the camera sees or view footage, things like that. Um, the Blackview has one annoying feature to where when your uh, phone connects to the dash cam, your phone can no longer connect to the internet for Google Maps or a Spotify or anything like that. So if your phone connects to the dash cam, all of a sudden your data stops working. 
neither of the other two dash cams have that issue. Um, I guess just the way they present themselves as a Wi-Fi hotspot, they don't say, hey, I have an internet connection, where I guess the Blackview does, and so your phone's trying to use the Blackview's internet connection, even though it doesn't have one available, so that's kind of an issue. But there's now an, a feature that's available with the Blackview to where you can have the Wi-Fi off by default, so your dash cam doesn't, or your phone doesn't connect to the dash cam every time you get in your car, and all of a sudden your internet stops working. And so um, it's still an annoyance, but at least there's workarounds that's available for that now. Another issue that I found is with the DoD app, uh, when you connect to the app and then you want to go in and start changing the settings, the app will not let you until you go into the app and say, hey, stop recording, and then you can go in and change the different settings. That's actually really weird. I'm not sure why it forces you to do that, but you can't change the settings when the dash cam is recording. The Thinkware app actually has a cool feature where it helps you aim the camera and get an idea as far as centering the camera and how far, you know, tilted up or down it should be relative to the hood of your car. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, but I find that Blackview and Thinkware have the most feature rich apps with the most options available. Now, speaking of Wi-Fi, uh, both the Thinkware and the Blackview have cloud functionality, meaning they can connect to a Wi-Fi hotspot and then you can remotely connect to your dash cam, uh, which is actually pretty cool to maybe access footage, change settings, even communicate like in case you get in an accident. Um, the dash cam can actually go out and text a friend and let you know where you are and the fact that an accident has occurred. So that's actually pretty cool. The DoD doesn't offer that. Uh, the Thinkware and the Blackview do. Personally, I find that to be a little bit of a, not to say a gimmick, but I don't really use it that much. Um, I mean, it's kind of cool, like you can have your car, you know, it's parked and then in case somebody hits your car, you can get a notification on your phone or if it detects motion, you can get a notification. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of cool to have this, but personally, I don't find myself using it that much. Uh, I've noticed with the Thinkware, the Wi-Fi seems to not work as well as the Blackview, meaning when I'm just parked in the parking lot, my Blackview is able to connect to my home's Wi-Fi, and then I can go in and view the camera, I can view the footage, I can get notified in case anything happens. The Thinkware, for some reason, it can connect to my phone's Wi-Fi hotspot if I enable tethering, but it's not able to connect to my home's Wi-Fi. I've tried 2.4 and 5 gigahertz can't do it. My radar detector can connect to Wi-Fi. My phone can connect to my Wi-Fi. My other dash cam sitting right next to it. But for some reason, the Thinkware is not able to do that. So I'm not able to use as much of the stuff with that one. Additionally, I've noticed Blackview actually has a lot more features available with their cloud functionality than Thinkware has. When you're sitting at home, you can also pull up your phone or the uh, program on your computer and live see what your car sees right now. So basically like a live security camera, essentially, that you can access over Wi-Fi. That's pretty cool. You can go in and watch all the video footage stored on your memory card in case you forgot to maybe take the memory card home. It's a little bit slower. It's a lot faster to just plug it into your computer, but you do have that capability, which is pretty nice. There's some two-way communication that you can do where uh, you can actually talk through the dash cam and the people in the car will hear it and you can have a two-way communication as if you're making a phone call or something. I don't really get the point of that one, but that's a feature that the Blackview has. So in general, I find the Blackview's options to be more feature rich. Uh, the advantage that I found with Thinkware has to do if you have multiple cameras. Um, if let's say you're running a fleet service. Uh, with Blackview, if you've got a fleet and a bunch of dash cams, they're actually gonna charge you for their service for multiple dash cams, whereas Thinkware gives you support for unlimited dash cams for free. So pros and cons to each system, but I'm gonna give the win to Blackview if you're looking for the uh, uh, any of the cloud functionality. Now, there's some features that the uh, the DoD and the Thinkware dash cams offer that the Blackview doesn't, things like uh, mobile speed cam alerts and uh, red light camera alerts. And so if you want to get notified to those, uh, you can actually have your dash cam do that for you. Personally, I haven't found it to be that helpful. I already have it on my radar detector. I've got it on Waze, and I don't really need it on a dash cam, but that is a feature that they offer, and that's kind of cool. Thinkware also has some additional uh, kind of safety stuff, speaking of which, built in, meaning kind of helping you avoid getting into an accident. There's things like uh, lane departure warnings, uh, there's front collision warnings, um, there's even things like uh, if the vehicle in front of you is about to pull away ahead of you, uh, the dash cam can actually beep and let you know that. Personally, I don't really find those features to be that helpful, and I actually find them to be a little bit annoying. I had one the other day where I was heading into the dog park, and the car in front of me, you know, at a red light, started to pull away, and I started going too, but even just that little bit was enough to trigger the dash cam, and it starts beeping at me, and I'm like, I know the car ahead of me is driving away, I'm following it, you know? So I find some of that stuff to be a little bit unnecessary and annoying, and so I wound up just turning all that off but that is something that Thinkware offers.
Speaking of annoying, uh, I find the Thinkware's voices to be probably the most annoying out of any of the dash cams. Now, one thing that I really like and I was actually most interested in had to do with the way it would uh, notify you of any sort of events when you were in parked recording mode. Uh, with the black view, for example, um, let's say there's an impact that it's detected. The dash cam will actually let you know that there was an impact detected while you were in parking mode. An impact was detected during parking mode. However, the issue is that it won't tell you how many events there have been. So if you maybe just came back from the grocery store and you closed your trunk or whatever and you get in your car, well, that would be triggered as an impact and the dash cam would let you know and you don't know if that was you or if something actually happened. And so you'd have to pull out your phone and look at the footage and you're like, ah, false alarm, it was just me. With the Thinkware, it can actually tell you how many events. Was it just one, meaning it was just you, or were they two or more, meaning something actually happened when you weren't in the car? You know, that's actually really helpful. During parking mode. Event detection recording. One. Occurred. Now that said, that was one of the things that I was most excited about testing the Thinkware and I found it to be incredibly annoying. What I'm finding is a dash cam is extremely chatty on startup. It actually says a ton of stuff. Here, I'll play a quick clip for you. During parking mode. Motion detection recording. Over 10 and. Event detection recording. One. Occurred. Continuous recording will now start. GPS connected. Now, as you could hear, it detected a lot of different events, which is great, but uh, it's a really chatty thing telling you things about, uh, you know, GPS is now connected. Like, I don't need to know any of that. Just be quiet. If there's something important, tell me. Now, with the black view, you can have it give you a silent startup. And then uh, in case there's an impact, it'll tell you that. With the Thinkware, if you want the impact detection voices, you have to have a, a very noisy startup and there's no ability to do a silent startup and then notify you also with the voice that, hey, there was an impact that was detected. Um, I've also noticed uh, there's things like the Thinkware, it tends to be very sensitive, like with the motion detection, for example. I tried it the other day and I set it down to the lowest setting and it was basically recording every single time a car drove by or a person walked by or anything. There were just a ton of unnecessary alerts and so it's really tough to kind of tell whether or not something legitimate happened. And so, you know, I don't necessarily want to know if I was parked for a few minutes and a bunch of cars drove by, like, don't tell me that, you know? So I don't wind up using that. I kind of use more of like the impact detection stuff or just the silent time lapse in the background maybe, you know? But other than that, I found that was a cool feature, but I didn't wind up finding it useful because of how noisy the dash cam is on startup and you can't separate the normal startup sounds from impact detected or something. Now, Blackview recently made a change with their dash cam where uh, it'll actually ignore any impacts within three minutes of starting up your car and driving away, which is great. That actually really helps cut out a lot of the false alarms. So if you, you know, get in your car and boom, slam your door and you're playing on your phone for a minute or something and then you drive away, you know, there's a little bit of time there, but the dash cam is not going to let you you know that an impact was detected because chances are it was you, which is really nice. I like that change that they've made, and I actually find that to be the better approach. Um, you know, quiet on startup, ignore maybe a few minutes, three minutes actually, of initial impacts, and then start recording. Um, so I'm actually really liking the black view one the best. The DoD, again, not quite as good with the voice notifications and the jingle on startup and stuff. So uh, again, I'm kind of giving the edge to Blackview in the alert presentation for uh, impacts detected and the silent startup capabilities and being able to do both. Now, when it comes to firmware updates and new features being added uh, or bugs to be fixed, um, all the dash cams, you can just download an update on your computer, put it in the memory card and plug it into the dash cam. It updates, cool, really nice, you know? The Blackview also allows you to do that uh, through your phone. You can download the update through the app and update your detector or, or update your dash cam right in the car, which is pretty cool. Thinkware has that option too. Now there's one issue that I found with the uh, DoD dash cam. Typically what happens is when you load in the firmware and pl plug it into your dash cam, the dash cam updates and then it's set with the new firmware and you're good to go. I had an issue with the DoD where every time I would start my car after a firmware update, it would reset to factory default settings. You know, I would disable all the voices and stuff, but then every time I start up my car next time, it starts talking again. It was really weird and I was like, what's going on? So when you update the firmware, um, it doesn't actually delete the firmware file off the memory card. So the next time you actually start up your car, it sees the firmware update again, updates your dash cam, 
goes back to factory default settings and it doesn't matter what you did last time as far as changing settings, now it's back to default, which is really annoying. The LS500W, the same camera but with the uh, LCD on the back, I've got both of those. That one, when you update the firmware, it'll actually prompt you to format the memory card, which is really nice. That way it'll erase that firmware file and not continually update every time you start up your car. And I wish the DoD would do something similar or at least just delete the file. So that way you don't have the same issue. I didn't run into the same issue with the Blackview or the Thinkware when it comes to firmware updates. Now, speaking of updates and bugs and that kind of stuff, there's one issue I found with the DoD um, and uh, the GPS functionality. Let's say you want to display miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour on screen. With the DoD, you can change it to miles per hour in the app, but it doesn't actually work on video. It's still always going to display kilometers per hour. I think it's a bug with the current firmware. You can set it to miles per hour, but it's always going to display kilometers per hour. Now, as far as the GPS stuff in general, the DoD is probably my least favorite because of the fact that at the bottom of the screen, if you enable the GPS, you're going to get both the speed as well as your latitude and longitude. Personally, I would rather not have the latitude and longitude and where I am displayed on video for privacy reasons, but I like the speed as an option for uh, maybe seeing how big of a save I just had with my radar detector or whatever, things like that. You know, I like having that as an option, or of course you can turn it off. With the DoD, if you turn on GPS, you're going to get the speed and the lat lawn, and there's no way to do just the speed, but not the coordinates and the position. Um, I wish you had the ability to separate that. With the Thinkware, you can display your uh, speed on the video. There's no latitude or longitude even available as an option. But one thing that's kind of annoying with the uh, Thinkware is at the bottom of the screen, it'll always display things like your uh, dash cam model number and your firmware version and your voltage right now that the dash cam is getting. Personally, I wish I had the option to turn some of that stuff off, like the firmware version of the voltage. I don't necessarily need that recorded on the video. And with the Thinkware, there's no way to turn that off at all. With the black view, you can have it display the speed um, and it doesn't do any sort of latitude and longitude. You also have the option of disabling the speed and not embedding it in the video itself and then going into the software and seeing where you were, how fast you were going, things like that, but not actually having it displayed on the video in case you want to share it and not have the speed there. And so I'm kind of finding the text on screen type stuff. Uh, again, I'm giving the edge to Blackview in terms of how they do their GPS stuff and how, you know, what information is displayed on screen or not. So as you can see from a feature perspective, uh, I'm kind of leaning towards the black view. I like the way it does a lot of the stuff. Um, I like the way the parking mode stuff works. It's the only one with the buffered parking uh, recording capabilities, you know? I mean, it's not perfect, of course. They all have their pros and cons, but as a complete package, I'm really to leaning towards the uh, black view the most. I think its main weakness is the video quality. Despite the fact that it has the highest bitrate, you know, the DoD is actually able to get better video quality, and that's kind of strange. And so that's the reason why I am really eyeing the new uh, DR900S. It's the same idea as the DR750S, but the front camera records in 4K. And so you're going to get uh, better video quality and, you know, resolution and detail from that front dash cam, which is kind of one of the main things that I would want to see improved on the DR750S. And so when it comes to the ultimate dash cam, that's the one that I'm leaning towards. Uh, you can pre-order it now. Um, it's coming out at the end of this month. So that's kind of what I'm thinking as far as the ultimate. But if we were to ignore that for the moment, I'm still leaning towards the DR750S because of just the overall package. It kind of has more of the features that I'm personally looking for. And I like the design and the way that things are implemented. Uh, of course, there's you know pros and cons. Maybe you want a little bit better video quality with the DoD or you want the parked recording stuff built into the dash cam like the Thinkware has, or you want its extended recording capabilities for long-term parking. You know, they all have their pros and cons and whatnot, but for me, uh, my favorite, my top pick is going to be the Blackview DR750S. So between the three, that's the one that I like best. And now you know kind of my thought process and the rationale behind why I've come up with that decision. So uh, anyways, yeah, there you go. There's a look at uh, some of the differences between the different dash cams, pros and cons, uh, all that kind of stuff, and how they compare. Uh, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching. I'll have links to all the different dash cams down below. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. Again, thanks so much, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.